pretty much every time that somebody mentions that they're a Star Wars fan online these days, they immediately get asked, what did you think of the prequels? I have my own problems with Revenge of the Sith, but I can enjoy both The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones as just kind of fun sci-fi special effects action movies. Of course, when I watch Attack of the Clones, Anakin and Padme mysteriously vanish through the entire second act, if you catch my meaning. Jesus Christ, that dialogue is almost as poorly written as Other M. There are precious few things that people actually liked from Attack of the Clones. They liked Christopher Lee, they liked Yoda, and they liked the progenitor of the most perplexingly popular character in Star Wars, Jango Fett. So Mr. Fett Sr. got his own video game, Star Wars Bounty Hunter. And it is... well, that's the point of watching the review, isn't it? The game begins shortly after The Phantom Menace. Darth Sidious contacts Count Dooku and tasks him with destroying the Bandogora, a demonic cult that's resurfaced and is trying to collapse the Republic into anarchy. He also tells Dooku they need a host for the clone army and suggests maybe using a good mercenary. Dooku decides to kill two birds with one stone by placing a humongous bounty on the Bandogora's leader, a fallen Jedi named Kamari Vosa. And if Vosa looks familiar to you, it's probably because they copied her design wholesale for Asajj Ventress in the 2D Clone Wars TV series. Seriously, I thought they were supposed to be twins when I saw them. So Jango Fett gets an invitation to hunt Vosa, gets a lead that leads to a ring of Coruscant's drug dealers, and follows a series of leads from there, tracking down the Bandogora. Bounty Hunter's story is simple, but compelling. It actually follows the same beats as a James Bond movie. It opens with an action scene that has nothing to do with the rest of the game. Jango is given a mission to track down and kill a target, and he travels to exotic locations until he finds the bad guy. You've got the elite evil henchman in the form of rival Bounty Hunter Montross, voiced by the always awesome clan. Nancy Brown. I'm worth more alive! You're worth enough dead. Teams up with a fellow agent since the game shows how he met Zam from the movie. Django gets captured and escapes an elaborate death trap. All that jazz, except for, you know, the sex and stuff. So if you ever wanted to see James Bond in space, I'll just, uh, Shut up now. The controls are fine. The camera both controls your actions and obeys your commands. There are sections of the game where the camera infuriatingly locks in place, like the camera doesn't like to phase through walls so enclosed spaces can be a pain, but everywhere else it does what you tell it to. Look! I am walking in a straight line! With no difficulties! My only problem with the general controls is the jetpack. It takes some major getting used to. For starters, Django Fett has probably the most useless-ass jetpack in science fiction history. It can only thrust for, like, three seconds before you need to land and refuel. Seriously. One chimichanga, two chimichanga. See? Only, like, two chimichangas. If you're not trying to move, you'll fly straight upward. If you are trying to move, you'll fly forward, but not gain any height. Which I guess makes sense from a physics standpoint, but it's still weird. The mechanics take some getting used to, and you're given so little jetpack fuel that you really don't have any leeway to screw up any jumps. Which is baffling, since that's usually the entire purpose of a jetpack. The upside, and this is kind of weird, is the second and third levels are basically jetpack boot camp. The game doesn't let you through the starting levels until you've mastered the thing. You beat these levels, the jetpack never gives you trouble again. It's tough at first, but the game hurts you because it loves you. On that note, I think it's time to dig into the issue that Bounty Hunter is infamous for, or at least why I suspect the game has been requested so many times. See, Bounty Hunter is broken into six chapters, each with three levels. The first two chapters are pretty simple, any casual player should be able to beat them with no difficulty. There is one really bullcrap corridor where you have to awkwardly jump down several moving platforms with a camera that's basically fixed so you can't see anything, but that's about the worst of it. All right, all lined up. Here we go. Shit, 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 shit. I should have gotten a real jetpack. But the opening levels apart from that are pretty fun. However, once you get to the third chapter, the game takes off the kid gloves, chucks them into the sun, and the game gets really hard really fast. The enemies get stronger weapons, because green lasers do more damage than red lasers. The enemy groups get larger. They throw in melee enemies that deal a ton of damage figure out how a guy punching me while I'm wearing armor deals more damage than a guy with guns, and the enemy groups spawn in far more advantageous positions, flanking around you and coming from multiple angles. This is literally the first thing you run into in the third chapter. A brick wall with two guys on machine gun turrets that can kill you in seconds in a field that has no cover. Good luck, douchebag! It's like this is the difficulty curve right here. It starts on a gently sloping hill, starts low, you're cruising along at a leisurely pace, and then BAM! You hit the cliffside of Mount Crumpet! A more gradual difficulty curve would have been nice. If you're going to jam a boot up my ass, the least you could do is ease it in. 
The big secret to Bounty Hunter is that it's hard, but it's not unfair. It walks the tightrope of being difficult without just overwhelming you. And your difficulty doesn't stem from bad design, lousy controls, or unbalanced mechanics. It's a well-made and well-designed game that is intentionally designed to be hard. It pisses you off enough that you want to keep going, but not so much that you pitch your controller through a wall, and the game does cut you plenty of slack. You get six lives per level, lose all your lives, and you start the level over. There are checkpoints before and after every major fight, and everything that was dead when you kicked the bucket stays dead when you respawn. You're given enough lives to where you can screw up a few times, but not so many that you can afford to just tank damage in any of the fights. You're given plenty of health pickups if you can reach them before you die. Most of the enemies take a reasonable amount of damage to take down, and you have special weapons for the enemies that can really soak up damage, and the enemies aren't so accurate that they can't reliably hit a moving target. You just have to stay mobile. Ah, I forgot how quick those cannons kill you! Ah, son of a bitch! Just use the walkways overhead for cover. There we go, you just have to play smart. The game puts nice quiet hallways between each enemy infested room so you can have a breather between fights. It really builds suspense, actually. Behind any door and behind any corner could be another giant death trap that there's no way around. <laughs> Damn it. There is no trick to beating Bounty Hunter. You could try and memorize every room in a level, but the levels are so long your patience will give out long before you try and just map around every room. The game rewards skill, thinking quick on your feet, playing smart, maneuvering effectively, and finding ways to use what little cover that you have. The game doesn't baby you, it doesn't pull any punches, and it's hard, but it's so damn satisfying to dive headfirst into an enemy base, frantically fight your way through the chaos and emerge victorious. Need to get across that ravine to that enemy stronghold. Guess this is the path over here. Crap, there's another one! Okay, okay, check the roof. Health! 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 That's my health! Die! Drink! Blazing green! Death bolts, you shits out! Ow! 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 God, this thing is useless! Okay, so, low health, no more health pickups, and both the turret and sniper rifle are out in the open and will just get me shot down to my last bit of health. <sighs> Only one option. Ah, can't push any faster! Cover, 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 got cover. I'll just work my way through this side of the base so I'm not fighting everybody at once. Die! Just the roof left. Ah! Oh, there's nobody up here. So, so everyone's dead? Yes! <laughs> In your collective dead faces, bitch! Woo! You've got a fairly wide arsenal of weapons to use. Your primary weapons are Django Signature dual pistols, which never run out of ammo. Holding the fire button shoots too slowly to kill anything quickly, so you have to fight by mashing the A button like it's a potato on Thanksgiving. You can lock onto and strafe around enemies for picking targets and precise targeting, or you can leave your finger off the strafe button and let Django shoot at whatever he wants. The game is competently programmed so he doesn't try shooting through walls or crap like that, and those of us that don't have turbo controllers have to resort to this to shoot faster. Like, there's a technique for offense and one for defense, you have to decide what the situation calls for. Your next weapon is the flamethrower, which one shot kills any enemy that comes near you and travels in an arc to clear out an entire group at once. This thing is perfect for clearing out groups of melee enemies. Burn, melon farmer, burn! Also in your arsenal is a bunch of crap that I never use. You've got fists. Whoopty shit, there's only a few levels where you don't have the flamethrower, which is the only close range weapon you need. You've got toxic darts, which are fast, accurate, and one shot kill anything that's not a boss covered in plot armor, but you only get five at the start of the level, which is enough to maybe take out a portion of one group of enemies. I don't know, you're probably supposed to use them to quickly thin out a tough group, but I'm always thinking to myself, I'll save these darts for later when I need them, and then I just never end up using them. The only time I've actually used them is on Malastare, where you have to fight these jungle cats that jump on you and claw your face off. For some reason, setting a jungle cat on fire only serves to piss it off more. 
Grenades have a very small blast radius and are very difficult to aim with any remote degree of accuracy. The only thing you'll reliably kill with them is yourself. The jetpack missiles have to be manually aimed because Django will just fire the missile straight off into nothing unless you point it yourself, and if there's a nearby enemy so powerful that you're trying to use a missile on it, chances are it will kill you while you stand still and try to aim the damn thing. Come to think of it, I've never really tried the missiles. I guess I gotta check it out to be fair for this review and I'll check it out. All these enemies bunched together, they don't know I'm here. I'll get them all with one blast. And that didn't do shit. Standing one foot away from the detonation of an anti-aircraft missile and a stiff breeze would have done more damage. So blast radius on the missile sucks too. Luckily the reverse is true also. The enemies with rockets pretty much have to land a direct hit on you or the missile doesn't do SHIT! Just like that. The side weapons are the useless grenade launcher, the you will only find it in two levels where you're forced to use it sniper rifle, and the machine gun and minigun that run out of ammo too quickly to help you much. The blaster and the flamethrower are the only good weapons in your arsenal really, but that's all you need to be quite honest. The other items in your standard arsenal are the ID scanner and the whipcord. I could have some fun with a Thai people up gun, but these are used for hunting bounties. Hunting bounties is a giant pain in the ass! in a game called Bounty Hunter. Here's how it works. In every level, there are 5 to 15 NPCs with bounties on them. You scan characters with the ID scanner to see which ones have bounties, but you have to stand completely still while you do this. So if any of the bounties are in the middle of an enemy group, which would be like 95% of them, you have no choice but to stand still, letting the enemies pound the shit out of you while you scan the enemies in the group for bounties that might not even exist. Because there's no such thing as stealth in this game, the second you come within several yards of an enemy group, everyone immediately knows you're there and starts attacking you. Each bounty has a dead price and an alive price. To claim the dead price, you just have to mark them with the scanner, kill them, and then claim the corpse. Seems to me you should be able to just kill all the enemies in a room and then ID scan the bodies to see if anybody's worth money, but that doesn't work. Capturing a bounty alive requires tying an enemy up with the whipcord and then claiming them, and the whipcord barely freaking works on a moving target. Get back here. Back here, you little shit! A stranger is trying to tie you up in a back alley! Why are you freaking out about that? I think the general idea is that if an enemy has a bounty on them, they'll drop their gun and run like hell after you've shot them a few times, but the action is so hectic, it's tough enough just to survive. I don't give a flying crap about the bounties. Going after the bounties in each level is way, way more trouble than it's worth. Taking all of the bounties means every single time you run into a group of enemies, you stop dead in your tracks, scan all the enemies while they shoot you to shit, and if you find one, you have to carefully kill the entire rest of the group, and then if you need him alive, you have to try to tie up the one guy that you actually want while he's trying to shoot you in the middle of stuff like this. All of this just to unlock concept art in the extras. I'm serious, that's all the bounties do. They're 100% optional, and the reward for actually doing them sucks. It's kind of cool that each bounty gives you a little description of what the person or droid is wanted for. It adds an extra touch of atmosphere to the game. There's a droid in the second level that's got a bounty because he witnessed a senator's affair. This guy is wanted because he defaulted on a loan from a mob boss. And this lady... Escaped from slavery? Wow. This game goes to some dark places, man. Capturing a runaway slave? That's awful. I mean, I'm still gonna do it because it's just a game, but I feel awful. One of the most persistent pains in the ass in the game is that if an enemy is too far away from you, you can't lock onto them, and Django usually won't shoot at them himself, leading to situations where you've got several enemies firing a hail of lasers at you with pixel-perfect accuracy, and you just can't shoot them back without finding some way to close the distance. It makes sense for the snipers, but freaking everybody can do it! The guys with basic handguns firing across canyons with complete accuracy? It even happens with guys toting those giant-ass miniguns! The kind of weapons that, in real life, you can barely even aim at stuff that's just across the room. You can try aiming at faraway enemies manually, but every time you get shot while trying to manually aim, Django flinches and your aim resets. So while you're trying to line up a shot at the douchebag who's out of reach, he just keeps nailing you and your aim is resetting. Even the sniper rifle doesn't get around this distance bug. Check this. There's two assholes manning turrets that kill you in seconds. I'm far enough away that this guy can't hit me, so I pull out my sniper rifle, I take careful aim at his nutsack because this douche has already killed me once, I fire, I land a direct hit, and nothing happens. So I move a lot closer. He still can't hit me, so I aim again, 
Another direct hit that does jack squat. I get even closer, this time I aim at his face because you never know, his species might be a race of Ken people that have nothing down there, but no, I still can't freaking hit him. Basically, in order for the game to register a hit on an enemy, that enemy has to be able to hit you and return. And again, no such thing as stealth. You fire one shot and everybody immediately figures out where you are. Going back to the sniper rifle, you fire one shot and everybody across this freaking canyon knows my exact position and can hit me with non-scoped weapons perfectly. I can't afford to sit still and use the sniper rifle, so Leroy Jenkinsing is my only option. Another minor annoyance is some of the rooms it isn't clear at all where you're supposed to go. You'll wander around for 10 to 15 minutes in a room that has no exit, only to find out once you've gone over every single nook and cranny that there's a switch bleeding in with the scenery or a grate you couldn't see. Are you kidding me? This down here is where I'm supposed to go? There's an honest debate whether this is a lack of hand-holding or just pointless complexity. My point is, what does wandering around a level doing nothing for 15 straight minutes contribute to the game besides bogging it down? Also, the boss fights are nothing to write home about. You circle strafe around the enemy shooting them, and they die way before you do. And that's about it. Bounty Hunter is not for everyone. Much as I enjoy and even admire the game's high yet balanced difficulty, the game's sheer hardness can easily turn you off or burn you out. When I was young, I played this game up to the second level of Chapter 3 and got so pissed off I didn't touch this game for years. I decided to revisit it in college and powered through most of the game up to the second Tatooine level, midway through the heinously difficult Chapter 5, and again, I gave up and didn't pick it up again for years. Of course, a lot of that was playing review subjects, but still, this game takes dedication, man. It takes major determination to persevere through level after level of kicking your ass, and there are times where the frustration just makes the genuine fun of the game not even worth it. The further you get into the game, it just gets more and more relentless. This canyon level where I got stuck is full of Tusken Raider snipers that can kill you in a few hits, or worse, knock you into pits where you die instantly while you're trying to fly over them. Ah! Goddamn rag-faced bastards! Okay, you know what? DRINK JET FUEL ASS WIPES! I actually managed to beat the level where I was stuck while I was gathering game footage. The key is just to bite the bullet and kill these guys with the sniper rifle, regardless of how annoying it is to use the damn thing. And then the next level kicked my ass again. By this point in the game, the enemies have switched to blue lasers, and it turns out the color blue hurts a lot worse than the color green, and these Gamoran guards carry axes that kill you in a few hits. If you forget, or you're too slow whipping out the flamethrower to fry some crispy bacon out of them, you can kiss a continue goodbye just like that. It seems around every quarter are enemies that can kill you before you can say, ouchie, I screw up a little bit, and I'm dead. But the funny thing is, I'm not mad. When I die, I feel it's because I screwed something up. I wasn't fast enough, was trying to play it too safe, or wasn't being methodical enough. I don't scream bullshit when I die several times in a row, and that's actually quite impressive for a game. This is where my progress on Bounty Hunter ends for the time being. I'll come back. The game is genuinely fun, and I believe I can beat this level with just a little bit of practice. But for now, beating Bounty Hunter continues to elude me. Star Wars Bounty Hunter is a good game, but it's not for everybody. The gameplay and core mechanics are solid, but the difficulty makes the game a fairly significant trial to play past the first few levels. It's fun and rewarding, but it's all a matter of taste. If you're someone who gets as tired of games being easy to the point of non-effort as I do, Bounty Hunter is one of the last great middle fingers to that tread. Proof that games can be hard as balls and still be fantastic. I will return, Bounty Hunter, one day. And I will stand triumphant!